Hello and welcome back to the channel. My name is Josh and you're watching our history. Today we're going over part 4 of the Closer Wars. So if you enjoy this, please be sure to like and if you are new here, please consider smashing that subscribe button. If this isn't your first right here and you haven't showed some love to that subscribe button, now is your opportunity. It really helps the channel out. Thank you very much. The Ninth War from 1877 to 1879. The background. The Fengu Kaleleka War, also known as Yechibi's uh, War, was the ninth and final frontier war that occurred in South Africa. It involved several powers, such as the Cape Colony government and its Fengu allies, the British Empire, and the Kosa armies, the Kaleleka and Nika. The Cape Colony government achieved partial independence from Britain with responsible government and had little interest in territorial expansion. To address local needs, the frontier was policed lightly using small, highly mobile mixed-race commandos recruited locally. The multiracial franchise and legal recognition for indigenous and land tenure eased frontier tensions, contributing to a period of peace and prosperity. Any further intrusion of the British government in the Cape Affairs to disrupt this state was thought unnecessary and ill-advised. The British government intended to expand its control over Southern Africa by establishing a confederation that united all the states of the region under the British Empire. The confederation scheme aimed to annex the remaining independent black states and a frontier war was considered an ideal opportunity to achieve this goal. However, both the Cape Colony and the Tosa expressed concern that such actions would create instability. The black African population of the frontier of the Cape Colony had an uneven integration into the life patterns and practices of the region. The Fengu quickly adapted to the change brought about in Southern Africa and embraced urban trade. However, the Kaleka, Tosa, who mostly lived in the independent Kaleka land towards the east, suffered greatly from alcoholism, wars, and the effect of Nonkawuse's cattle killings. They were resentful for the financial successes enjoyed by the Fengu, even though some Kaleka lived within the borders of the Cape Colony. A series of devastating droughts swept through the Transkei region of South Africa, and this led to political tensions among the Tosa people, particularly between the Fengu, Tembu, and Kaleka ethnic groups. The most severe drought on record occurred in 1877, and the affected parts of the Transkei, Basuto land, and the Cape Colony controlled Siskei. The tension came to a head during a wedding celebration on September of 1877 when a bar fight broke out between Galeka and Fengu. Later that day, Galeka attacked a Cape Colony police outpost that was mainly staffed by Fengu police officers. Outbreak. In September 1877, the Cape Colony government rejected Governor Henry Bartle Freire's proposal to implement the Confederation scheme for the second time. The government believed that a recent attack on the Galeka was predominantly Fengu ethnic police force was a local matter that could be handled by the police. However, Freire used the incident as a pretext to invade the neighboring state of Galeka land. Sarili, the paramount chief of Galeka land, declined Freire's invitation to meet with him and was subsequently declared deposed and at war. Freire also failed to quell rumors of an impending Kosa invasion, leading to unrest among radical settler groups on the Cape frontier. The Cape Colony's War Chief Sarhili faced pressure from fractions within his government and mobilized his armies to the frontier. However, the Cape government maintained that the issue would be resolved locally and not necessitate international military invention. Negotiations by Prime Minister John Charles Molteno secured a promise from Britain to keep Imperial troops from crossing the frontier. Despite this, Eleka forces attacked a Cape police outpost near the frontier, and others soon followed. The Cape government had to use diplomatic leverage to prevent British forces from intervening. Local paramilitaries were deployed under the leadership of Commander Feltman Bikicha and Chief Magistrate Charles Griffith. The commandos made up mainly of Boer, Tembu and Fengu fighters engaged and defeated the Kaleka army. Dividing into three fast-moving columns, they pushed into Kaleka land and devastated the armies. The war was over in three weeks and Sarhili had also applied for peace. With little incentive to conquer or occupy land, 
Cape government recalled their commandos who disbanded. Bartle Freire's War Council During the Cape's campaign against Tlalekaland, Governor Freire formed a war council at King Williamstown to oversee the military operations. This council comprised of key figures such as Freire himself, Lieutenant General Sir Arthur Cunningham, who represented the interests of the British Empire. Additionally, two of Molteno's ministers, John X. Merriman and Charles Brownlee, were also appointed to the council to represent local Cape interests. The council in charge of overseeing the occupation of Treleka land was plagued by deep divisions and arguments. Governor ba Sir Bartle Freire was determined to pursue a policy of full occupation of the region for the benefit of the white settlers and his future confederation. This put him at odds with those who advocated for the Union policy towards the Kaleka people who were being displaced. Freire also became more insistent on imperial control of the war, which further intensified the disagreements within the council. There was a disagreement between the British Imperial Command and the Cape government over the use of local commandos. The Cape government was wary of giving their local forces to the Imperial Command for what they saw was a local conflict, not an imperial war of conquest. They also believed that the British troops were unsuitable for frontier warfare, slow-moving, ineffective and expensive compared to the local forces. Moreover, the Cape government supposed Freire's requirement of them paying for British Imperial troops and insisted on using only local funded forces. The Cape government's reluctance was due to their recent attainment for local democracy. They were suspicious of any imperial infringement upon it. Merriman, who was appointed by Molteno to supervise the Cape's war effort, initially attempted to collaborate with Freire, but gradually began to share Molteno's position of the incompetence and unfairness of British imperial policy in Southern Africa. The Imperial War During the second stage of the war in South Africa, tensions were heightened when Sir Bertel Freire ordered the disarmament of all black peoples in the Cape. This decision sparked confusion and outrage among black soldiers and a furious protest from Cape government. The militia deserted and protests erupted, causing General Cunningham to unilaterally deploy Imperial troops to thinly encircle all of British Kafraria. The Cape demanded that the British government fire Cunningham, abandon its racial disarmament policy and allow the Cape to deploy its predominantly black paramilitary to establish order. However, Freire refused and brought in Imperial troops to enforce the disarmament and invade Treleka land once again, this time the purpose of white settlement. The British attempted to replicate the successful strategy of dividing into three columns to engage the Kaleka people. However, due to their slow moving troops, the British soon became disorientated and exhausted, unable to engage or locate the dispersed Kaleka forces who were agile and quick to regroup. As the British searched Kaleka land and the Kaleka land army easily slipped past them, and crossed the border into Cape Colony. Sandile, the Tleka leader, fought, joined forces with the Tleka in rebellion. The combined Tosa armies inflicted heavy damage on the frontier region. This included attacks on Fengu towns and other frontier settlements, which, they, which were often left in ruins. The Tosa also targeted supply lines, cutting off important sources of food and other resources for the British forces. Outposts were evacuated as the British army fell back in the face of the Tulsa advance. The impact of these attacks was severe, with many people losing their homes and livelihoods. Sir John Molteno, who had been heavily involved in the diplomatic battle with Britain to preserve the Cape's constitutional independence, took matters in his own hands and travelled to the front lines. There he met with the British governor and harshly condemned their perceived bad intentions and incompetence. Molteno demanded free command over the Cape's indigenous forces to operate and contain the violence, and made it clear that he would rather s sacrifice his job than tolerate any further British interference. Freire appealed to the British colonial office to dissolve the government and take direct control of the country. This move was part of the larger effort to strengthen British imperial control over South Africa, including the ongoing wars against the Zulu and the Boer peoples. Freire believed that direct imperial control would allow for more effective implementation of the British policies and greater economic development.
However, his actions were met with criticism and controversy both in South Africa and in Britain. There was a significant increase in the Tlosa armies crossing the frontier. These armies caused widespread destruction and chaos, with many towns and farms in the region being burned down. As a result, many refugees sought shelter in the remaining frontier forts. However, British troops were in short supply, as a significant number of them were stationed in Kalekaland to carry out occupation duties. This meant that troops were thinly spread across the region, making it difficult to contain the Tlosa armies. Sir Bartle Freire faced a major challenge from the Tlosa speaking Kaleka people who resented the Anglicization of the region. Although Freire had recently disbanded many of the frontier militias and Fengu regiments, he was able to keep some of these forces under his control. With the help of legendary commander Feltman Bikicha, Freire was able to mobilize these forces against the Tlaleka resulting in the battle on the 13th of January near Nyumatra. The imperial troops, although assisted, were facing difficulties due to being tired, short of rations, and unable to follow up on their victories. On the 7th of February, a subsequent attack from the Kentani or Kentane was barely repelled, requiring considerable more assistance from the Fengu and the local frontier light horse militia. The Battle of Kentani saw significant casualties but the imperial troops were able to hold off their attack. After the Tlaleka tribe retreated from their conflict, Sandile's rebel Nrika armies continued their fight against the imperial troops. They resorted to guerrilla warfare tactics and escaped the imperial troops by moving to the Amatola mountain range. The rebel armies continued to fight, causing inconvenience and trouble for the imperial troops. Cunningham, who was initially in charge of the troops, was removed from his position by London. Lieutenant General Theisiger was appointed as his replacement and took over the command. The Guerrilla War The Amatola range has a long history of serving as a mountain stronghold for the closer range insurgents. The range's vast, dark, creeper-entwined forests have provided cover for the closer people during wars against European colonizers and local authorities. The British troops faced a difficult challenge while pursuing Sandile's rebels in the mountain ranges. Despite their superior military training and advanced technology, they were continuously outmaneuvered by the rebels. Even attempts to signal with flags, use path systems and other techniques proved ineffective. The British lacked experience in the environment and encountered mismanagement, stretched supply lines, sickness and other hardships. Meanwhile, Cape commandos consisting of Boer and Fengu locals were hesitant to get involved. The British adopted a strategy recommended by the locals by dividing the vast territory into 11 military provinces, each with a mounted garrison. If a rebel regiment was encountered, it was chased until it encountered the next province, where the pursuit was taken over by the next garrison. The valley exits from the range were fortified, and under this uninterrupted pressure, the rebel forces quickly splintered Sandile fled down the Fish River Valley, where he was killed by a Fengu commando. The surviving rebels were granted amnesty. Conclusion The war lasted for a year and it marked the final blow for the last independent Tlosa state, Kalekaland. After the war, Kalekaland was no longer an independent territory and it was administered by the British. It was likely that the conflict would have remained a small localized ethnic dispute had it not been for the intervention of Sir Bartle Freire. Freire moved to the frontier and incorporated the conflict into the British Greater Confederation scheme, which transformed the minor conflict into a full-scale war. Once ignited, the broader conflict resulted in the annexation of all remaining closer territory under British control. The war also led Britain to overthrow the Cape Colony's elected government. Freire continued to apply his tactics to invade independent kingdoms, including the Zulu Kingdom, in 1879. The Anglo-Zulu War demonstrated the disastrous use of slow-moving troop columns, resulting in the defeat of the British forces as is at Isildwana. Although Freire was recalled for misconduct, a series of confederation wars ensued for the next 20 years resulting in the loss of all black independence in Southern Africa and eventually build up to the Anglo-Boer War decades later.